to the Italian Football Podcast. Hello everybody and welcome back to another Mercato Deep Dive here on the Italian Football Podcast. We have now reached the end of the summer. It's August 12th, Monday, when we're recording this. And after having done Napoli, Juve, Milan, Lazio, Atalanta, Roma, um, the time has now come to end this summer with, with Fiorentina. And we're delighted to be joined by our good friend. He's the chief news editor of Laviola.it, what used to be Fiorentina.it, but for reasons which I'm sure you can understand, um, <laughs> you're on your own. They're no longer called Fiorentina.it. Uh, <laughs> welcome, Nicolò Misul. Thank you. Hi, hi guys. It's good to be good to be back on the podcast. So good to have you. And and yeah, I mean, you guys just to quickly what happened was Fiorentina didn't want you to be called Fiorentina IT because you're a news outlet and they basically you you changed your name to laviola.it that's pretty that's cool. right that's pretty much uh what what happened after like 26 years because we were probably the first news outlet online completely dedicated to a single football club we it was like the, the website was founded in 1998 uh we had to change name but things go when when on right, people still like they got used to the new name pretty quickly, so it's all good now. Yeah, I mean, Laviola is Laviola. I mean, it's, yeah, it's still, so it's not the end of the world. But uh, another another interesting interaction with with our good friend Siorocco uh, Comiso, I can imagine. Yeah, uh, it was a battle started by Joe Barone, and uh, it went on for for a couple of years, and then it ended up in a in a positive way for Fiorentina in a negative way for us but in the end, at the end of the day it's it's all good and uh, yeah. we'll keep working the, the, the team hasn't changed nothing has changed no. just the, just the name yeah it's just everything is the same i mean it's, yeah. it's the same you guys are still the number one Fiorentina news outlet um you guys cover Fiorentina brilliantly in italian and uh, you know it's, it's nothing is new it's just it, it is what it is <laughs> let's let's start with the appointment of Raffaele Palladino. Um, why did Fiorentina go after him? Um, what, and was he the first choice? Who, were there any other alternatives? So there were two alternatives. Um, Palladino was uh, choice number one. Uh, Alberto Aquilani was choice number two. So Aquilani was already accustomed with the, the Fiorentina uh, uh, environment because he uh, managed the Primavera team for three years, so the under twenty one uh, team for uh, sorry under nineteen team for uh, three years. Like he did pretty well there, and then he went to Pisa where he had a average season, I'd say, last year in Serie B. Uh, obviously, he's got a really good relationship with um, Prade with uh, Joe Barone at the time, but um, it was a bit of a, a gamble. Uh, after one just one year in Serie B, it would have been a, a bit of a gamble. Uh, so th- for this reason, Paladino was choice number one. Is a completely different style of football compared to Italiano, but a similar um, choice to what was made back when uh, Italiano was chosen. So like uh, an upcoming um, manager who had a couple of brilliant years at Monza and uh, he was um, ambitious and uh, looking forward to a new challenge in a slightly bigger club. I'd say a much big, bigger club compared to Monza, but Monza did did a ride during the last two seasons. So it was, um, yeah, it, it made sense as a, as a name. So there weren't, bigger names out there that Fiorentina mm, were interested in and uh, they went for Paladino. Uh, Monza would have wanted Paladino to stay, but in the end, um, it was his choice to, to, to leave and uh, they, they, they found a deal pretty, pretty quickly. Okay. Well, one of the coaches who was linked um, was also Maurizio Sarri, or I should say Maurizio Sarri was very disappointed that he wasn't even considered at Fiorentina. Um, why is Let's say that? he linked himself to yeah, Fiorentina. He himself, <laughs> exactly, he linked himself. <laughs> what was there a reason why? Because, I mean, to me, it suggests when I look at 
I look at Pioli and how he played at Milan. I look at how Italiano played at Fiorentina. To me, Sarri seems just like a natural replacement to either one of those. He would have been the fans' favorite, I'd say. And uh, Fiorentina did have some talks with him uh, about three years ago before they chose Gattuso. And we all know how it went with Gattuso leaving after just like 10 days. And then Italiano came after that. But um, at the time, he wasn't convinced. He was uh, looking for a bigger club. Now he was willing to accept uh, Fiorentina uh, and Fiorentina's project because he's from around here. Fiorentina is like, um, he's the team he supports. So it would have been um, like for him, he would have wanted to come to Fiorentina. But this time around, uh, the management uh, at the club wanted, um, um, let's say, a coach that, wouldn't interfere too much in the Mercato and didn't have like big requests from the Mercato because they knew it would have been a difficult one for for this summer. So they went for Paladino, who's uh, a bit less demanding uh, regarding to the players he wants on his uh, on his roster. <laughs> Maurizio, <laughs> Maurizio Sarri and, and, and Rocco Comiso together trying to get along um, similarly to Antonio Conte and Aurelio De Laurentiis I mean, yeah, I I'd say that's... so, even worse <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, uh... <laughs> oh dear um, yeah, so I mean Paladino is an interesting choice of course, he did good at Monza like you said um, let's talk a little bit about players who, who are on the way out um, Nico Gonzalez is the player that's been linked the most with Juve um what is the state of play there but it's pretty much a done deal I mean uh Fiorentina and Juventus reached an agreement to sell um like for Nico Gonzalez to go to Turin uh and play with Juventus it's gonna be like um a loan for one season and then uh Next year, they're going to pay the full price for, for the Argentinian. And uh, Fiorentino already struck a deal with Genoa for Arbel Gudmundsson. The only thing, the, the thing that is basically stopping the, um, these two deals to go through is uh, Genoa need to find a replacement good enough for uh, Arbel Gudmundsson, uh, a replacement that won't disappoint the fans from one side because they've had like a... Uh, record ticket sale, uh, season ticket sale this this summer, twenty eight thousand, and uh, the fans were really happy with the team. The fact that the they had already done the whole mercato in like before the end of June, uh, they didn't need to change that many players. And then in just one week, they lost Retegi, and they're gonna lose probably a good Monsono. So this way, is, uh, it's very complicated. And Gilardino himself has come out publicly saying um well losing like i need to find out who my players are going to be before the beginning of the season and we're just a few days away from from the first game so they need to find a, a good replacement for albert goodmanson once they found that and they've signed this replacement albert goodmanson can come to fiorentina he has already a deal with the fiorentina like contract and everything Everything has already been done and he wants to come to Florence. They just need all these deals to come uh, into place for it to like just be completely 100%. Yeah, well, I want to ask you about Albert Goodmanson uh, later on. Um, but so so we're essentially just waiting. So, that, so that's holding up the, the Juventus. The strongly, the, these two deals are strongly linked. So okay. once Fiorentina get Goodmanson, they're going to let Nico free. It's a very different deal from what we've seen in the past. I mean, Fiorentina fans are becoming accustomed to like uh, seeing their best players going to Juventus. It happened with Bernadeschi, happened with Kies after that, then Vlaovic, uh, and now Nico Gonzalez. Every time they get a really good player, they, they then lose it to the biggest archery rivals. So um, they're getting accustomed to it, although it shouldn't be like this. So... Uh, I think they should try and sell the players to different clubs rather than Juventus because it is not this thing is not making the fans too happy. But at the same time, it's a different deal, as I was saying, because Nico didn't ask to leave. So he said, "Okay, if you're willing, if you're willing to sell me, 
I'm willing to go. Uh, I'd be okay with Atalanta. I'd be okay with Juventus. Uh, they found a deal pretty quickly with the, with the Bianconeri. Uh, so otherwise, if it, this doesn't happen, I'm not going to be against staying in Florence. That's a, that's a different thing that, for example, happened with uh, Federico Chiesa at the time. So this time round, it's going to like things should go pretty smoothly. And if it wasn't for Atalanta signing Retegi, both deals would already been done last week. Mm. So how much how much is the deal worth the Nico Gonzalez deal? So like the Nico Gonzalez deal to Juventus is around thirty five mil, uh, between thirty five and forty mil, and um, the Albert Goodmanson it would be a loan for uh, seven million the first year, and then uh, they're gonna buy the rest of the. Um, like they're gonna pay the rest of the money next year, uh, and it's another seventeen million. So it's twenty five, around twenty five um, million in total. Okay. Next year, obviously, I don't know if you're aware of it, but like, uh, there's a um, so like in November, uh, Goodmanson is gonna go on trial in Iceland uh, for um, it's sexual, alleged sexual, yeah, yeah sexual assault, misconduct. Yes, yeah, sexual misconduct. So, yeah. So th- this is the reason why Fiorentina are going for a loan first and then signing the f- like paying the rest later on. Okay. It- okay. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll get to that. I've got a question on that anyway. Um, so, so Nico Gonzalez deal worth around 35, 40 mil uh, yeah. loan with an obligation next year. Yeah. Great. Um, Sofian Amrabat, uh, what's his situation? Which clubs want to sign him? Are Man United <laughs> still in for him? Because he stay at Man United. What's happening? So it's 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 weird. No, so like he he came back to Florence last week, so, and he's been training with the with the rest of the team for the past couple of weeks. Uh, he's like he wanted to stay at Man United, and it seemed like Man United were willing to to keep him, not because they had an obligation. They basically they had a, it was a ten million loan, so they already paid ten million just to have him for for the past season. And uh, they weren't willing to pay another twenty uh, for for the for the player this year. So um, they were going for another loan, uh, but Fiorentina weren't too sold on this on this option because they wanted to get more money for him as soon as they they could. So uh, he came back to Florence, and now he was in talks with uh, Fenerbahce, and Fenerbahce are still very like keen to sign him, but so far. The offer has been too low. Is around it was around twelve million, and uh, it's too low for Fiorentina to let him go. So I still think he's gonna leave before the end of the transfer window. But things have changed slightly since Saturday because uh, Fiorentina played a uh, friendly against uh, Freiburg in Germany, and uh, he started for Fiorentina. And after the game, Paladino spoke to the media and said. Um, well, if he's here, I'm willing to to play him, and uh, we we establish a really good relationship in these couple of weeks. So, if I could have him for the rest of the season, I'd be happy. Otherwise, if he goes, I'm, I hope that we'll find a replacement as soon as possible because midfield Fiorentina's midfield at the moment needs uh, still uh, at least a couple of players more. Mm, absolutely, there's been quite a few players that have left Fiorentina. Um, um, I wanted to ask you, are there any other players uh, that you expect um, to leave uh, Fiorentina, aside from Amrabat, Nico Gonzalez? Well, one between Icone and Brecalo, if not both of them, uh, will definitely leave because uh, they're not they're not needed and um, up till today, they're not part of the Fiorentina project. So they, they're like Fiorentina are willing to let them go, but so far they haven't been, except for like Icone got a couple of offers from Saudi Arabia, but his um, his intention is to stay and play in Europe. So he's look like he's hoping to get more offers from some European clubs in the next uh, few days. And uh, who else? Um, Brecalo. Brecalo hasn't like he played on loan last season he went back to Croatia but like so far he hasn't received any offers but Fiorentina very much willing and hoping to to receive offers and to let him go uh definitely and um we'll see what what will happen with Kwame as well because so far um 
they la Fiorentina they received an offer from Mallorca uh, an important offer 8 million and they were willing to let him go but then he he performed really well during the preseason and Paladino likes him so he could be a good option uh, from the bench for the like uh, for Fiorentino fans as a striker mm. Yes, he absolutely could. You, in, of course, uh, Fiorentina have already signed Moise Ken. They've signed Marin Pongracic to replace Milenkovic. Um, Sabiri's returned from his loan. Colpani's... Oh, yes. Obviously, I, f- I was forgetting about Sabiri because he hasn't trained with the rest of the team uh, any any time this summer. So, like, But he's, he's going to leave and he's got offers from Saudi Arabia. So he's probably mm-hmm. going back to Saudi Arabia. To Saudi. Okay. Yeah. Well, Colpani's joined on a loan uh, as well. Um, so there's, uh, there's, there's the main players uh, to 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 let's talk about players coming in. Um, you mentioned Albert Goodmanson. You stated that he's got a a a alleged uh, sexual misconduct case in September. Was it? Uh, I think it's November. November yeah. in Iceland. Yeah. Um, and so that's going to go to trial then. Um, so that is that. So that's what is. So G- Fiorentina have agreed to loan him with an o- with with an option, not an obligation. Is that correct? No, it's an obligation. But mm-hmm. if anything happens with the with the with the case, they're they're free to like uh, break the contract. Okay. So if yeah. he's convicted, of, yes, of he shouldn't like. He wasn't convicted in um, the first time round, so mm-hmm. uh, they're hoping that things go the same way this time round as well. What are the um, what are the alternatives to Goodmanson? I would say at the moment there are no alternatives to Goodmanson. Like, the, the, well, you mean already present at the club? Yeah, you no, no, no. Um, I mean, if, if if Goodmanson deal falls apart, um... uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna be completely honest. Fiorentina are uh, not really doing like too well with the 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 plan Bs. So if if the um, if this deal doesn't go through, probably Nico will stay and uh, mm-hmm. he won't leave and he won't go to Juventus. But they don't really have a plan B for mm-hmm. for Goodmanson. They they were after Goodmanson in January already. They tried. They made an offer for like um, I think twenty five million back then, and Genoa said no, and. Now they're paying the same amount of money, but obviously it's a different transfer window, so it's easier to to sign players during the summer rather than uh, um, halfway through the season. So they're very keen on signing Goodmans, and I don't think they have a plan B at the moment if the deal doesn't go through. Mm. Uh, that, that that sounds rather ominous, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I want to talk about some other players being linked before talking about players that have arrived and also some players that are already there and what the idea is moving forward. So let's start with Michael Foloruncio. Um, mm-hmm. Is there any interest from Fiorentina? Though? I'd say no. I'd, I'd say he's very close to Lazio now and um, he's looking to, like, he's a Lazio fan. Uh, oh. So he's looking to to go to, to Lazio rather than uh, Florence. I'd say at the moment there's an interest, but there haven't been any negotiation between Napoli and Fiorentina. So I don't think it's likely to see him coming to Florence. Um, another player, speaking of Rome, Roma player Eduardo Bove. Um, he's been linked, as has Tanner Tessman, the American, who played in the Olympics, as well as co-national Weston McKenney. Can you detail d- d- anything about these guys? Yeah, so as I was saying, Fiorentina um, <clears throat> said goodbye to many midfielders at the end of, the, uh, of last season. So Jack Bonaventura, Gaetano Castrovilli, mm. uh, Maxi Lopez, Arthur, there's many players that have left. So uh, Paladino had to work for most of the preseason with just two uh, players that are probably going to be in the squad for the next season, which are Mandragora and Bianco. But Bianco is a young player who played on, on loan at Reggiana last year, so he needs experience in in Serie A. Well, well, Mandragora is not a is not a starting option. Is not good enough to be a starting option for Fiorentina. So they signed Amir Richardson. A Moroccan midfielder, 22. Mm. He just recently won the bronze medal at the Olympics with Morocco. Mm. He arrived uh, as we speak. Like we are, he arrived this morning, uh, Monday the 12th. 
from from Morocco where he celebrated the bronze uh, medal he met the king and now he's signing um and he's a very good prospect people have been talking highly about him so he's, he should be a good signing he's a very tall player he's almost 2 meters tall he's the son of um Sugar Richardson a former NBA basketball player and um so he's the first signing and and it's probably the replacement for Tana Tesman because Fiorentina had a deal with Venezia and with the player but the management of the player wanted two extra so it was a deal for 5 million to sign him from Venezia and he was the best midfielder in last season Serie B and he would have been a good very good signing for for Fiorentina but um the deal seemed to have um fallen through because uh, fallen off because um the his agent wanted 2 million on top of the 5 million that Fiorentina were paying to Venezia and um Fiorentina weren't willing to to accept that deal so now it's it, it, they they've stopped talking the parts have stopped, stopped talking so then looking for other midfielders Bove is certainly one player that they like, but Roma are asking for around 20 million for Bove. And uh, it's a price tag that Fiorentina um, considered too high for the for the player. And at the same time, Weston McKennie could be included in the Nico Gonzalez deal. It's not off the cards, but um, although Fiorentina would prefer to have just cash for the player rather than a um, player in exchange. So West, Weston McKennie and Arthur as well, he could uh, make his way back to Florence. So I'd say these are the two players that Juventus could include in the Nico Gonzalez deal uh, if they managed to convince uh, Fiorentina. And these are two players that Fiorentina could sign, although I don't see Arthur being fit for, the, for Paladino's style of play, while Weston McKennie would be. Mm, agreed. What about Sergi Roberto? Is there any truth that Fiorentina wants him? He's been uh, he's been offered to Fiorentina, so the um, his management know that Fiorentina, along with other clubs, are looking for um for an uh, for a midfielder. And obviously, Fiorentina just recently signed David De Gea, uh, the former Man United goalkeeper. So obviously, I, I think he put. Fiorentina in the radar for Spanish players as well. So along with uh, Ajax and some other clubs, these uh, Fiorentina are one of the teams that have been linked to Sergio Roberto. Uh, we'll see. So far, I just know that he's been he's been offered to the club, um, and the club is uh, evaluating this this option. But I don't I don't think there have been like talks already between the club and the player. Okay, are there any other positions and players that we haven't discussed that Fiorentina are looking at? Uh, so you... Fiorentina uh, need another centre-back because they changed their style of play. So now they're now playing at three at the back. Mm. Um, they signed Pongracic, but he was Milenkovic's replacement. And um, they need someone else just to because at the moment they've, they've got three centre-backs. Biragi has been moved... Uh, Moved back to uh, to centre back now, so it's a new position. But we're seeing this more and more with the uh, left backs or right backs. As they get older, they become uh, centre backs in a in in a back three. In yeah. Back three, yes. So, uh, but they 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 already signed Valentini from Boca Juniors for yeah. the next December. They tried to stack a deal with uh, Boca Junior to have him coming this summer otherwise he's not going to play with the Argentinian club until the end of the year until he leaves until the end of his contract so the Fiorentina tried but Boca Junior which were asking uh, 4 million for the players and Fiorentina said we're not going to pay 4 million for a, for a player that we've already signed for in, 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 in 6 months he's going to be with us for free so they're looking to find another center back and also goalkeeper things have slightly changed in the last two three 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 days because they signed the hair which was surprising um and uh, they were looking to a lot of both uh terraciano and christensen and to have martinelli be the second choice behind the he's a very young and talented goalkeeper and he was going to be the second option behind the gear but then Terracciano refused Monza. 
he wants to stay in Florence. Ideally, he might receive some offers, especially from Ajax in the next coming days. But like, if he refuses uh, any other option, he's going to renew his contract. He's, uh, he's in his last year with Fiorentina. He's going to renew his contract and stay at Fiorentina. And then, obviously, Martinelli will have to find a loan somewhere while they're looking to sell Christensen. But at the moment, they don't have any... any uh, like No clubs are interested in the Danish goalkeeper. And to be fair, he hasn't had the best season last year. But before the 31st of August, I, I, I'd reckon they, they'll find someone who wants him. But um, speaking of De Gea, that was my next question. What was the thinking behind that signing? Uh, it was surprising for us as as for anyone else. Like we did not expect to see him coming. So like they they had talks with other goalkeepers, completely different. They had a, um, a Audero in mind at the beginning of the transfer session. Um, they after that Musso was another option they they liked a lot. Um, Turati, who's a Sassuolo goalkeeper, but he played on loan. Uh, Frosinone last year and then all of a sudden because he was in talks with other Italian clubs uh, for example Como and uh, Genoa um, De Gea was offered to Fiorentina and Fiorentina decided to go for it I think he was in uh, in a moment where all the fans were complaining a lot about the Mercato and about uh, Fiorentina being really slow at signing new players and a name like that can calm the fans down a little bit because it's a big name. It's it's surprising to see someone like the hair coming to feel like three years ago it, it, it was a deal that could not have even be thought about. Um it's it's interesting because we'll see how fit he is and how long it's gonna take him to be game like um game fit because he's been he hasn't played for over 40 months it's more than a year so it's going to take him a little bit of time but um with him and terraciano as a backup op- option i think it's a i mean it's a it's a safer bet having terraciano as a as a backup option rather than have like a someone else like christensen i'd say oh oh absolutely um everyone was a bit surprised by the hair and and and, and absolutely terraciano is not good enough for fiorentina i think anyone would agree with that um, um, we've all seen Christensen. Well, like you said, there's not much to add. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit now about Paladino. He plays a three-four-two-one at Monza. Uh, so I assume that's what he's going to do at Fiorentina. Um, yeah. at, would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like he's been very open about it, and he said like that's and that's that's how he's played in all the friendlies that Fiorentina have played so far. Uh, Unlike Italiano, though, is not uh, he doesn't stick to a single um, um, game plan. Like he he likes to switch it up if things aren't going, yeah. aren't going Fiorentina's way. So, unlike Italiano, he at least he says, and that's what he's done at Monza as well. He he can change things up during the game as well. Yeah, but he can. It's gonna be oh. the the starting eleven. I want to ask you about, because you said Cristiano Biragi is going to play as a left centre-back in a back three. He's also the captain. That sh- that means that Parisi will finally start as a wing-back on the left, um, which, which is very, very comforting because it's, I think he's a very talented player um, and he could possibly, in my opinion, he's, he's a player for, for the Italy national team when he's, you know, if he, if he explodes, which I think he will. But on the other side, you have Michael Coyote, who is, in my opinion, an incredibly talented player who I think is will one day, if nurtured properly, play for Italy as a right-back. But with Dodo back, where does Coyote play? Does he play as a right centre-back? Does he play as a wing-back? What's going on? Um, it's an interesting question. I mean, I agree with what you said about uh, Coyote. He's, uh, he's very... He'll be interesting <clears throat> to, see, to see him um, for the national team as well. And he might get a call up pretty soon for for the national team. He's grown a lot, like physically as well. Like we've seen a lot of the, a huge difference from last year in his uh, in his physique and his body, and um, he's a much bigger player now. Uh, I think he's gonna be at, at least well. Fiorentina are gonna play a lot of games, just the way the same way it happened in the last two years with Conference League and Coppa Italia. So they'll, they'll need to switch players up. Uh, but 
Dodo will be the starting option. And um, basically, Coyote, it's a, it's, um, I'd say it's Zodo reserves, but it's it's a bit uh, unfair to call him that. But th- that's that's how I think are going to be, at least for now. Fiorentina re- received a couple of really big offers for Coyote this summer from Newcastle, for example, around uh, 25 million. But they say they wanted more, and uh, rightfully so because it's a it's a huge talent. Um, but we'll see. He has played at the, as a as a right centre back as well, but I don't think we're going to see him there that often uh we'll see how the how the, how the trans like how the market goes like if they manage to find another center back if if they're not they cannot uh he might do but like uh, otherwise he's gonna be dodo dodo's alternative on the on the right and and parisi it's gonna be interesting to see him because so far paladino has uh, not openly not publicly but he he's criticized him a, a couple of few times. He wants more from him, and uh, he wants more from him, especially when he's uh, when the when the team is attacking. So uh, we'll see if the if Fiorentina will look for a for a backup as well, or if they just use Parisi and Biragi alternating them on the left. Mm. Well, that's 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 really interesting. Um, and with Colpani, I, I just have a I'm, I'm a little bit worried. I think Fiorentina will have a good season, but I'm a little bit worried about where the goals are going to come from. If Nico mm. Gonzalez leaves, Moise Ken, Colpani, I mean, wh- who's going to score the goals? <laughs> good question. And, and that's been the main issue with Fiorentina for the past three years, I'd say. Mm. Since Vlaovic left, mm. Fiorentina have really struggled to find a consistent goal scorer. Um, well, since Vlaovic left, both Fiorentina and Vlaovic have struggled to score, to score goals. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> but like, Fiorentina has struggled a lot more and they've changed yeah. many strikers, starting from uh, Artur Cabral, yeah. then Jovic, then um, Zola last year. Uh, who else? So they, they, they had a the few players. Belotti, yes, that's the one I was forgetting about. Yes, so they've uh, they've struggled to find a uh, their their main striker. Paladino is convinced that Ken Moise Ken is going to be that player. Uh, he 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 strongly wanted Ken at Monza and now at Fiorentina. So he Ken was a um, Paladino's choice, same as Colpani, I'd say. Uh, mm. So he really wanted him, and he he believes that. He can be. Uh, he can find find himself at Fiorentina. He can find the best the best self at Fiorentina. He can go back to that PSG time where he scored like seventeen goals. Mm. And uh, after that, like he, he's hoping that the 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 duo Colpani and Gudmundsson can add goals to mm. to yeah to Fiore, to Moise can score. I'd say it's an interesting trident. Colpani can Gudmundsson. It's very dynamic. Um, and it's it's interesting to see what Paladini can do. Um, I think Fiorentina will have to be careful with defending this year round. Like mm-hmm. uh, at, the, at the same time, it was uh, an issue with Italiano as well. But like in in the friend, obviously the the, the summer friendlies, and uh, there's not much that we can say about them. But like they've seemed to struggle with the very small clubs during the friendlies, so they'll need to. Uh, be a, li- a little bit more careful when the season starts back there because uh, a, l- a lot of time the teams uh, the team pushes forward a lot but then seems to like suffer whenever they they need to defend. Mm, absolutely, it's it's gonna. I mean, w- just one, t- two, a couple of more questions. What are the, what is the target this year for uh, Fiorentina? Is it to well, finally win the Conference League? I'd um, say more is like to improve the um, league position, so to qualify for the, at least the Europa League next season. It's not going to be easy because all the teams that are in front of Fiorentina, or they were in front of Fiorentina last last year, they they've had a good uh, transfer. Like they, they've they're, they're definitely stronger than last year. I'd say if mm-hmm. you look, if you look at Roma, um, maybe AC Milan have struggled a little bit more, but then. Uh, it's it's not going to be easy to improve the position, but that's the that's the goal with mm-hmm. Fiorentina. They they want to go back to into the Europa League, um, or uh, and if a, a Conference League 
final comes again obviously winning winning the conference league because that's becoming like a, a nightmare for the Fiorentina fans and and the players as well but like the main goal is to improve the I'd say the league position for sure um a little bit of off field stuff now i mean this 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 new stadium thing back and forth between comiso and the florence council has been back and forth what is the status now uh so half of the stadium is um is being rebuilt at the moment uh so it's not going to be the stadium won't be at full capacity for this season um they'll manage to like obviously they finish some of the big works before the beginning of the the season but then Fiorentina will will have uh they won't have the Curva Fiesole Curva Fiesole will be closed for the whole season because of they're this, rebuilding uh, and refurbishing yeah they rebuild yeah. yes and they're covering it so people won't have to like get wet whenever it's raining which is uh, something incredible in 2024 to still have <laughs> unbelievable a... <laughs> yeah. I, i don't even know what to say like yeah, it, it, I, yeah. <laughs> so that's uh that's the reason why but i they need to um but the the um, the florence municipality they need to find more funds in order to finish all the works that they have in plan and we'll see how that goes i think they'll find them but the um, so Fiorentina broke so isn't paying for it because his no, thing no, was if no, i pay for won't. it i decide yeah exactly so he won't pay a dime and uh, he's not a, in a good relationship with the with the florence mayor it they kind of they're trying to rebuild it now but they went to court just two weeks ago so <laughs> because Fiorentina were like uh, we don't know where we're gonna play next year uh, if we will we'll, we'll be allowed to play uh, in the Stadio Franchi uh, we'll see and we want to stop the all the um, works that they, they you're doing and obviously the um, uh, the the verdict was against Fiorentina so they will the the, the works will go on and Fiorentina will have a smaller capacity this this season. That's why even the season tickets are a lot less this year than they were last year. And um, we'll see how that goes. That's that's a developing story. We we need to do a podcast every couple of weeks in order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. As, as long as Comiso's there and and he's in, well, yeah. he hasn't been here for a, quite a long time. That's uh, something that is worrying the fans a little bit that he hasn't come back to Italy in a long time now since the conference league final and we were more used to see him also once um once every two months i'd say he would go or two or three months and he hasn't got an, another visit in plan anytime soon usually for the beginning of the season he's always in florence it won't be like this this year so oh. fans are hoping that he's not losing interest in the club although he's uh is trying to cut expenses. So one of Fiorentina's main goals for this transfer season was to get rid of all the players that had big contracts. That's mm. why they sold Milenkovic. That's that's why they're willing to sell uh, Nico Gonzalez and all the players they're signing. They have um, smaller contracts. Uh, so how, we'll see how it goes. But uh, fans are a, bit, are a bit worried that Comiso isn't speaking as much as he used to. And obviously Barone is not around and that, changed things a lot uh, for the club because he was doing 90% of the work in and and out the the club like the the team so like he was uh, deciding everything from the transfer market to the viola park uh, to the stadium he was an all around uh, worker and now uh, they've managed to separate all the duties but um comiso doesn't seem to be around as as often as he was Who's so he hasn't so he's just divided Joe Barone's responsibilities. Yeah, up. he hasn't appointed a replacement for Joe. No, Barone. no. So mm. it it would have been tough to find someone to replace Barone, and in a way, I think that was a good thing from one point of view. But from another point of view, it was uh, it wasn't. I think it was uh, one of the reasons why Fiorentina struggle in some in certain areas, especially. From a um, like a technical point of view, like he, he wasn't a football guy. No. Uh, he, he didn't have much experience, especially in the transfer market. So they sh- he should they should have should have allowed Prade to to have more power in signing the players and deciding who to sign or someone else. I'm not saying Prade is uh, 
is um, Fiorentina's solution to like um, problem solution or problem solver, but um, they should have allowed him someone else to have more power in those areas and well maybe uh, um, having Barone do more the institutional stuff for yeah. for Fiorentina. Yeah, I agree 100%. That was part of the problem. But I mean, Viola Park has been finished, built. It's state of the art. It's absolutely fantastic. So that is good for the club. And it's certainly elevated the value of the club. Um, and, and it's made it more attractive. Um, as for the stadium, half of it is being refurbished, we know. And, and we'll see what happens to the other half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in true Italian style. Yeah. Um, and, and of course, Comiso refuses to pay for it um, because he he wants, if, if he's going to pay for it, then he wants to own it and the, the municipality doesn't want to do that. Um, they also, if I remember correctly, made the Artemio Franchi a building of, of cultural specific like importance, didn't they? Exactly. And that's, that's the main issue because that's the reason why it can't be destroyed and rebuilt again. We have to work around certain areas because uh, it was designed by a very, very famous architect. And so some, some parts of the stadium can be touched and they have to stay original as they are. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. That's the reason why that's the main issue with the, with the studio because they looked for other areas in Florence where they could build a stadium and they didn't manage to find, well, there was one, but Comiso wasn't willing to pay 20 million just to buy the area. So he... Which area part, was it? Which area? It was, was it? it was very close to the airport. Is where Peretola. now... Sorry? The Peretola airport. Exactly. It's yeah. very close. It's right next to Peretola. It's where the agro market is now. So basically where all the fruit and veg shops around the city go and buy the the fruit and veg uh, isn't that where isolotto is isn't that what it's called like, no it's like... it's actually it's peretola or novoli is called but it's where the university the main university ah. is um and the but and the house of justice is there as well uh, but that's that's the thing. So when when Comiso arrived in Florence, he was hundred percent sure that the he was going to close that deal and he was going to build the stadium there. Uh, he was probably advised by people before he bought the club that building a stadium would have been fairly easy in Florence, and um, he probably didn't do his um, his due diligence well enough, I'd say, because Florence is a mess, uh, just like the rest of Italy, but. Um, and at the same time, Italy is not America where someone with money can come and uh, build or destroy. And rightfully so, because obviously we're an historical country and we've got a lot of old stuff uh, which needs to be preserved. And Florence is a city that pretty much used to rule the world yeah. <laughs> via the Medici banker family. And you exactly. can't waltz into a city like that with that tradition where there is a clear power, hier power hierarchy and structure and think that just because you've got lots of money, you can bully your way around. It just does not work like that in Italy and absolutely not in Florence. Exactly. And with that, <laughs> that's the what uh, Comiso thought he could do. And uh, obviously... He found himself hard time and as soon as he landed in Florence from that point of view. So like that deal fell through and they looked for the other areas, but not, not very um, serious. Like they, for a while they talked about Campi Bizenzio, which is a, a small town near Florence, but that yeah. wasn't a, an actual real option. He, like, he used it as leverage to, to convince the, the, the Florence mayor to, to let him build the stadium he wanted. But obviously, because he, we can't destroy the Stadio Franchi, and that's what he wanted to do, uh, then Florence City, like the city of Florence, had to like take the matter, uh, take the matter in their own hands and uh, build, rebuild this, the, the current stadium because Florence needs a better stadium. Absolutely. And also, it could be used for the the Euros that are going to be played in. Uh, in, in, in Italy, so it's amongst the, the stadium that could be one of the five that are going to be used in, in, in Italy, so we'll see how that goes. They obviously need to hurry up, and <laughs> usually when you're do, doing works in Italy, it's never going to uh, respect the, <laughs> the deadline yeah. that you're given. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we all know. <laughs> Everyone who listens to this podcast knows <laughs> knows that. Um, thank you so much, Nicola. Before I let you go, um, if people want to follow you on social media, uh, where can they find you? Um, you can ob- obviously type uh, Laviola uh, dot it uh, for for the um, for the website. Uh, on X Twitter, as, as you want to call it, it's um, at n m so uh nicolo and for nicolo and m for mother whatever uh, i s u l m i s u l uh i don't know this happened in the past that people have criticized the fact that i don't really update my my twitter handle so that's that's on me and i i always say no i'm going to start using it and then <laughs> i never do but i that's that's where you can find him or uh, instagram my full name, Nico Mizu. Um, you can find me wherever. Nice or one. listen to Radio Bruno, uh, which is uh, the Fiorentina's main radio where I'm a regular speaker. Or Radio Sportiva, which is uh, the only national radio, uh, sports radio in Italy, where I cover Fiorentina for them. Mm. Mm. Nice one. Nice one. Thank you so much for coming on, Nicolo. We always appreciate it. We will tag you uh, in all, and, and, and Laviola and, and every, uh, Laviola.it is their Twitter handle, of course, as well when we push this out on, on social as well, Instagram, everywhere we put it. Thank you so much for coming on. Everybody else will be back with a Q&A uh, tomorrow and then, of course, the post-match reaction pod to the Atalanta-Real Madrid Super Cup game. Until next time, take care of yourselves and each other. Ciao, ciao.